Welcome, everyone. We'll be getting started in just a minute or two. All right. Very good. We'll start in just one more minute. Thank you all for being here. In the meantime, we have some information on the screen about how you can participate in today's meeting. But we'll cover these in more detail in a, in a couple moments. All right, we seem to have a critical mass in, so we'll go ahead with some initial overviews. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Andy Pindoli, and I'll be serving as your trusty meeting facilitator tonight. We really wanna thank you for taking the time to be here to learn about and provide feedback on the draft housing blueprint. Uh, so I'll be serving as facilitators, I noted, uh, focusing on the goals and objectives of the, the draft blueprint. So my role is to really guide today's discussion and ultimately make sure everyone has an opportunity to share their input in a really safe and respectful manner. Now, before we get too far into it, I'd like to go and introduce one of our interpreters, uh, Alejandra del Soto Vela, who uh, she and Andres Marquez will be providing simultaneous translation into Spanish language. So um, Alejandra, thank you. Please go ahead with your announcement. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And so uh, we're offering interpretation today. So if you prefer to hear this webinar in Spanish, just select the little globe icon on the bottom of the screen and select the Spanish and you will be able to hear the interpretation. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas tardes a todos. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. Estamos ofreciendo interpretación del seminario. Si prefieren escucharnos en español, únicamente seleccionen el icono en forma de globo terráqueo en la parte inferior de su pantalla y seleccionen el lenguaje de español para poder escuchar la interpretación. Okay, very good. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and choose uh, the language that you'd like to uh, participate in tonight. So with that, I'll move into a little bit more explanation. At specific points in our meeting, we'll open discussion with you all to hear your ideas and answer your questions. There are many ways to provide your comments. First, we have the Zoom Q&A function, and this allows you to type in your questions as well as your comments. So feel free to put comments there as well. Uh, you can find the Q&A button that opens the window probably down at the bottom of your screen, or if you're using your smartphone, if you touch on the three dots or more button, you'll see it there as well. And then similarly, if you at any point in our discussion periods, if you'd like to speak over audio, um, you're, you can indicate that to us by clicking the raise hand button. And again, you should see that if you're on a full screen, you can see at the bottom of your controls. Uh, again, if you're on smartphone, probably clicking the more button and you will see the raise hand um, uh, feature there. Now, for those of you who might be on a smartphone, uh, you can also press over the, the phone dial controls. You can press star nine to indicate that you would like to speak and then listen for the message that says something to the effect of the host would like you to unmute your microphone. And at that point, you can press star six to unmute. So if any of you who are you know, through a phone connection, we'll help you work through that. And then when you're done, you can push star six to re-mute yourselves. So. So again, just in summary, um, this is how we'll have engagement happening tonight. We'll, we'll also be using the Zoom polls feature on a couple occasions, so you can look forward to that. When those are ready, they'll pop up on your screen. 
And once you provide your answer, you can close the poll by clicking on the X uh, that you'll see there. You certainly do not have to respond to a poll if you don't care to. You're also welcome to respond in the Q&A or verbally uh, over audio once our discussion begins. Okay, well that, thank you for, we wanted to make sure everyone's aware of those controls and features tonight. Uh, but first of all, now I wanted to dive into the agenda more and, and starting off to, clear, to really emphasize that the county is committed to curbing the housing affordability crisis. And to help in this effort, the county is creating a roadmap to help guide our ongoing response. So in today's presentation, we're gonna provide information on why we need a housing blueprint, how you can provide feedback on the goals and objectives that are included in the current draft of the blueprint. We'll give you an overview of those draft goals and objectives. And we'll also provide an opportunity to answer your questions and gather initial feedback to ensure that any additional considerations are incorporated in the next iteration of the blueprints, goals, and objectives. So while many of the county's efforts to respond to the housing crisis are not new, we are just at the initial phase of developing the blueprint. And it's really important that we hear from all of you. So we also know that many of you have contributed to housing related discussions in the past and in the very near term. And for some, today may be your first time. We thank you for your interest in this important topic. So this meeting is not the only nor the last opportunity for engaging in the housing blueprint. As the blueprint is refined, additional engagement opportunities will be identified and shared um, in the time ahead. Now, I also want to note that the housing blueprint is a collaborative effort across the county. Today, we're joined by representatives from three of the county departments involved in developing the blueprint, planning and development services, housing and community development services, and the Department of General Services. So before we hear from, speak, from our speakers, we have a short video that we're going to play now to help introduce this effort. And just after the video, we'll get to hear from Natalia Henschel. Um, so with that, let me begin the video. The County of San Diego is committed to curbing the housing affordability crisis, and we need your, your input to develop a blueprint for solutions. For decades, home building has not kept pace with our growing population and demand for housing at nearly all income levels. This has caused housing costs to skyrocket in the county. Close to 20% of San Diegans are spending over 50% of their income on housing, contributing to rising levels of displacements, overcrowding, and homelessness, especially for vulnerable populations like seniors. The county is committed to solutions. Since 2019, the Board of Supervisors has established multiple initiatives to stimulate housing production and improve access to homes for the most vulnerable. From new land use policies for the unincorporated county to new housing development and resource programs throughout the region, the county is dedicating resources and leveraging funding to get people housed and to ensure that new housing is created in places where residents can thrive and impacts to the environment are reduced. While many of the board's directives have been completed, others are in progress and subject to changes in policy, priorities, and regulatory requirements. Moving forward, we need a guiding tool to help maximize resources, balance priorities, and direct efforts. As a first step, the board approved an initial draft housing blueprint in December of 2022. The draft blueprint lays out the goals, objectives, and strategies to meet housing needs with a focus on our core values. Integrity, belonging, excellence, access, sustainability, and equity. It reflects prior community input, specific regional priorities, direction from the Board of Supervisors, as well as state mandates. As we refine the blueprint, your feedback is important to ensure that any new factors in the changing housing landscape are considered. Thank you for being here. We look forward to hearing from you.
Thank you, Andy. Um, so as the video presented, the housing affordability crisis is contributing to rising levels of displacement, overcrowding, and homelessness, especially for vulnerable populations. In the last couple of years, the board has adopted over 20 different initiatives focusing on increasing affordable housing by stimulating housing production through direction and land use policy, housing development, housing resources and programming throughout the region and in the unincorporated county. Many of those initiatives have been accomplished, but we still have a way to go as we work through others. And those remaining efforts, as well as other potential solutions and strategies that we're looking to explore, may be impacted by multiple factors. So in light of this, the county identified the need to create a guiding tool to help direct the county's ongoing response in its role in creating and maintaining affordable housing across the region. The initial draft housing blueprint was presented to the board at the Let's Talk Housing Workshop in December. The purpose of the housing blueprint is to lay out a comprehensive list of goals, objectives, and strategies that the county will follow to maximize our resources, balance priorities, and ensure the steps that we take to meet San Diego's housing needs align with our core values of integrity, belonging, excellence, access, sustainability, and equity. In the first phase of the Blueprint's development process, staff drafted an initial set of goals, objectives, and strategies. These reflected regional priorities, direction from the board, state mandates, and community input that was received across all of the county's housing efforts. We are now in phase two and working to refine the draft Blueprint's goals and objectives based on feedback from the board and the community to ensure that any new factors in the changing housing landscape are considered. This summer, the refined goals and objectives will be presented to the board along with the community feedback collected during this process. The final goals and objectives will then directly inform strategies that will be included in the Blueprint. The overall final blueprint will be updated and presented to the board for their consideration once finalized. The county is currently working to contract a consultant to assist in finalizing the blueprint in phase three of the process. The latest version of the draft blueprint includes the board's feedback that was provided and received at the Let's Talk Housing Workshop in December. It now includes five overarching goals and eight objectives. To help raise awareness and gather feedback on the blueprint, we've developed a project page on the Engage San Diego County website. This website is the county's online community engagement platform. There you can find information on the blueprint and other county housing efforts. A short community survey is available on the page to gather feedback on additional considerations for the draft goals and objectives. There is also an expanded survey um, available if you'd like to provide more detailed feedback. Through the website, you're also able to submit questions about the housing blueprint. Along with our digital engagement, we are giving presentations like this one and facilitating discussions to gather feedback. During this phase, participants are invited to review information on the Engage San Diego County site, share that information with others, participate in the surveys, and contribute to, concert, to conversations at meetings. As the blueprint is refined, additional engagement opportunities will be identified. I will now turn it over to Tara Lieberman with Planning and Development Services to present the draft goals. Thank you, Natalia. I'll now provide an overview of the draft goals. Please note that you can also access these on the project page if you would like to study them more closely. The Blueprint's five goals are adopted from San Diego's Regional Planning Agency standard and its Housing Acceleration Program strategy. Apologize for that noise interruption. Um, so as I mentioned, the Blueprint's five goals are adopted from San Diego's Regional Planning Agency standard and its Housing Acceleration Program strategy, which was adopted in 2022. The strategy was established to prioritize planning activities that accelerate housing production. According to SANDAG, these housing policy goals, also known as the five P's, address the root causes of the housing crisis. The first goal is produce housing for all. 
It refers to supporting and implementing policies to increase housing production of all kinds and locating housing in urbanized areas with access to transit, jobs, and amenities that enhance the quality of life for all residents. The second goal is promote equity, inclusion, and sustainability. It refers to implementing housing solutions that address the historic patterns of exclusionary housing practices, segregation, and other inequities, and ensuring that safe, healthy, accessible, and inclusive housing opportunities are available to everyone. It also refers to housing solutions that promote climate resilient communities, the preservation of open space, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, as well as vehicle miles traveled. The third goal is preserve vulnerable housing. This refers to supporting proactive strategies to preserve affordable housing, such as tracking expiration dates of affordable housing that's deed restricted, keeping tenants informed of their rights, and investing in the rehabilitation of housing to preserve affordability. The fourth goal is to prevent displacement. This goal seeks to implement policies that prevent vulnerable residents from harmful outcomes of displacement resulting from improvements to neighborhood amenities such as transit and open space. Strategies should include studying existing and potential displacement pressures and monitoring the effectiveness of housing retention strategies in relation to planned transit improvements. The fifth and final goal is to protect tenants by supporting renters by providing information on tenants' rights and creating protections to minimize economic eviction or unsustainable rent increases. I will now turn it back to Andy. All right, thank you, Tara and Natalia both. So now we'd like to take this opportunity to pause to hear your thoughts. Before we start, so I do want to note that the um, that these feedback questions are also reflected in the surveys that are currently open on the Engage San Diego County site. So if you prefer to, to provide your feedback online. So the first thing we'd like to do is we'd like to know from you which goal is most important to you, or if you feel that a goal is missing, we'd like to know that as well. So to do so, in a moment, I'm going to post a Zoom poll question on your screen. You may choose one answer. If you choose other, please tell us about this choice in the Q&A or over the audio. And again, you can raise your Zoom hand uh, to indicate if you'd like to speak over the, uh, over the audio. So again, you can respond through the poll or if you prefer, enter a number for the corresponding goal in the Q&A box. So the interpreters will also read the poll question uh, as we provide it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll question and it will come up on your screen. So again, our question is, which goal is most important to you? Is it first, produce housing for all? Second, promote equity, inclusion, and sustainability? Third, preserve vulnerable housing? Four, prevent displacement? Five, protect tenants? And six is our other category. And again, if you choose other, We'd appreciate if you give us more details in the Q&A, sorry, not the chat, but the Q&A box um, that we have. So good. Um, many of you have responded, almost all of you. I'll give it about 10 more seconds. All right. Last call. And I'll go ahead and end the poll now. And let's take a look at the results here for all of us to see. So again, would love to hear more about the choices you identified, the choice you made for a prior, your priority goal. And again, for those of you who identified other, we'd appreciate hearing about that as well. Um, so uh, clearly it looks like produce housing for all, promote equity, inclusion, sustainability, as also ranks highly, but notably, at, at least each goal was chosen by at least one person. So that's that's certainly helpful to see overall. Thank you for that. Um, good. So I see, let's see, no hands raised at the moment, but I do note, um, let's see, I do see, thank you for some of the questions and comments starting to come into the Q&A um, section. And I see a a question from um, Bonnie Lang posted. Thank you, uh, Bonnie Lang, for that. 
and uh, a response is actually being typed in now, uh, right now. So we'll look forward to that response as well. And then Cynthia, Johnny, thank you for your comment that this should be a ranking question as opposed to choosing one because they are all important. And thank you for that comment. Uh, we appreciate that. We do wanna stress that this certainly is not about choosing a top goal and eliminating any of the other goals, really more of a tool to help us understand, get a sense as to where some of you, you know, may feel are most important. So I'll stop sharing it for now, but I see more questions and comments coming in. Thank you. Uh, let's see, a comment such as housing being a human right. Uh, those are, I see a comment from Melanie about other, um, a comment around, um, excuse me, a goal around restricting and or limiting the multi-property rental market, such as Airbnbs, as they do not serve those in need of housing and may create an unbalanced housing market. Thank you, Melanie, for that. Um, and so, uh, Tizero Tishom, for, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing, we see your question about the difference between housing for all versus promote equity inclusion. Thank you for that question. And there's a response being generated for you right now. Um, and Emily, Egg your your comment about preventing displacement being more proactive versus reactive. Um, thank you for that. Um, and Alicia, thank you. Uh, your comment around urbanized areas, emphasizing housing for all seniors uh, being at, at great risk who live in rural and unincorporated areas and linking to preventing displacement uh, that will be difficult without enough affordable senior housing um, where they can have access to their support networks and not necessarily having to force them to move to urbanized areas. So Alicia, thank you for that comment as well. Good, thank you for that. I do see one hand uh, raised to zero to Shom. I'm gonna go ahead. You should be able to speak now over the audio if you unmute yourself. Go ahead. Oh, um, apologies. Um, I forgot to lower my hand. No problem, oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Can I see some more comments coming in again? If anyone would like to speak over the audio, please go ahead and let us know with your uh, Zoom hand uh, raised. Or if you're struggling with that at all, you can also let us know, put a message in the Q&A that you would like to speak over the audio. That's certainly fine too. Um, good, I see more comments coming in from uh, Levi. Uh, the lack of inventory creating high demand, creating high rents. Um, so question around whether increasing the housing supply rapidly benefit our local economy better than raising minimum wage. Certainly an interesting economic based question, sounds like. <laughs> um, thank you for that, that question. Um, and then Alex Zukas, so identifying another goal, focusing on enhanced quality of life, preserved neighborhoods, and provide sufficient infrastructure for any new construction. So Alex, thank you uh, for that comment. Um, very good. So I do say, I did want to acknowledge that uh, a few, um, again, those of you who posted comments, we have some answers having come in. And again, to the question from Bonnie Lang about HUD voucher support and Kelly Sammons with the county has, has responded uh, to you about the wait list around um, for the HUD wait list for vouchers, uh, there's a response there um, that the Section 8 wait lists around the region are quite lengthy. And in our county, the wait is approximately 12 plus years. Um, so uh, by you can reach out to the housing authority in your area to confirm your application and that your household information is up to date. So Kelly, thank you for providing that response. And then um, Natalia responded to Cynthia uh, Ajani's uh, statement that this the, the poll question we provided should be a ranking uh, question. And so we do we do want to stress that on the survey that we provided through the Engage uh, website, you certainly can get into a more deeper level of input, including ranking of uh, the goals, as well as the objectives, which we'll get to in a little bit in a few minutes here as well, too. So thank you, Natalia, for that response as well. And then Tizero Tashom, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing, um, Tara Lieberman responded to your question that housing for all refers to increasing housing production of all kinds. So the total number of units across the region, 
whereas promoting equity, inclusion, and sustainability refers to ensuring that our policies and programs address historic patterns of segregation and other inequities and promote climate resilient communities as well too. So thank you again for to the team for helping to answer. And then Bonnie Lang, I see your Zoom hand raised. I'm gonna go ahead, you should be able to speak now if you can unmute yourself. Okay, yes, uh, I just wanted to note and I appreciate your response regarding the HUD. Um, I've been waiting since 2010. At that mm. time, it was a five-year waiting list. And mm. are you not affiliated with housing? Uh, this is a separate entity. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Bonnie. I see Kelly Salmon's coming off mute here. Kelly, do you have some, some more um, information for Bonnie? Sure, so absolutely. So we, we do have six different housing authorities within the county of San Diego. So I'm not exactly sure which, which jurisdiction you're in. Um, I will speak to the county, which we provide the housing choice voucher program for the unincorporated area, as well as 13 of the cities. Uh, again, our, our waiting list is approximately 10 plus years, and it's, it's based on allocations of funding from HUD. I mean, unfortunately, that's one area where, as a local government, we don't have a lot of control over that over that supply which is why it makes things like this housing blueprint so much more important and you know, how we can provide other opportunities that are within our control. Um, I'd be happy to uh, put my email in the chat. And if you would like to discuss further or your specific, uh, your specific situation, I'd be happy to help you navigate through that system. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Bonnie, thank you for your question. And do um, and let us know if you struggle to see the response in the Q&A. That's where Kelly will put her email there for you okay. uh, for, for thank follow up. So. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Um, let's see, I see some other um, comments have come in. Um, let's see, some, some new, new ones just in the last minute or two. Madison Coleman, thank you. Um, question around, does sustainability include prioritizing all new construction to be electric and retrofitting existing homes? Thank you for that question, Madison. Well, our team will do whatever response they can here in the coming minutes. And uh, let's see, Vivian, we see your comment as well. Thank you that we should significantly reduce short-term rentals until our housing supply rebounds to accommodate all um, who need or want housing. And that will help provide an immediate supply of housing, allowing for a new development supply in the future. Okay, so thank you, Vivian, for that. Appreciate that. Okay, very good. Um, let's see. Um, so thank you. These are these. This is a really good start. I we appreciate all the comments and questions coming in so far. Again, there's a couple couple questions that our team will attempt to answer again in the Q and A you know box as it is, and uh, so look forward to that. So I think what we can do now is we'd like to move on to the next section, uh, which talks about draft objectives. And in a moment, I'll introduce our next speaker. So I wanted to also note to you just a logistical. Uh, comment as well. We are, as you gathered, I think, when, when you logged in, we are recording uh, this meeting tonight. So we'll have the video and audio recording. And obviously, all Q&A uh, that you type in and provide to us, that's all immediately recorded for us as well. So we thank you for that and providing your input and feedback in that way. And again, we will remind about keeping in touch and participating in the surveys that we have available on the Engage website as well. So. Okay, so with that, I'd like to now turn it over to Angela Jackson Yamas from the Department of General Services, and she's going to present uh, the draft objectives for us. Angela, thank you. Thank you, Andy. There are eight draft objectives. As shared earlier, these were informed by regional priorities, direction from the board, state mandates, and community input received across all the county's housing efforts. Here are the first four, starting with the planning and facilitating, starting with the planning and facilitating of construction of unit 6,700 6, units by 2029 for the unincorporated county with a sub goal to finance and incentivize 2,800 of those as low and very low income units. These numbers are mandated by the state through the regional housing needs assessment and allocated to the county by SANDAG. Second is support the production of 10,000 affordable units regionally by 2030 
on publicly owned property as reflected in the joint city and county of San Diego housing resolution adopted last fall. Third is create more available units each year. And fourth, as directed by the board, implement sustainability criteria for affordable housing developments funded by the county or developed on county property. In the next four, we have identify and leverage alternative funding sources and cultivate partnerships, advance sustainable housing production by accelerating sustainable housing in infill areas or areas that are considered to be what are called VMT efficient because they're located near jobs and transit. This objective seeks to align directly with other county efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, such as the county's transportation study guide, regional decarbonization framework, and state mandates such as the California Air Resource Board plans. As mandated by the state through Assembly Bill 686, advance equity and fair housing by focusing affordable housing production in high opportunity areas where jobs, transit, schools, and other amenities are present. And finally, advanced housing across San Diego County region including within areas of unincorporated cities that are near jobs, amenities, transit, and or otherwise meet our equity, community, and sustainability objectives. I'll now turn it back over to Andy. Thank you, Angela. So, so you see on the left side are the eight objectives that Angela just reviewed. And to try and facilitate a discussion with you around these objectives, we tried distilling them down to five topics that we think the eight objectives generally cover. So these include meeting housing goals set by state mandates and regional priorities, ensuring affordable housing is built in a sustainable way, locating housing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, securing more funding sources and partnerships, and locating housing near transit, jobs, schools, and other amenities where people can thrive. So now what we'd like to do, we have another, our second pause point with you. We'd like to really hear your thoughts. So as previously noted, feedback questions are also reflected in the surveys currently open on the Engage San Diego County site if you to prefer to provide your feedback online. And I do wanna note there's a short, quick version, but there's also a more expansive, detailed version if you'd like to really get into the finer details of some of these objectives. Now, uh, so we'd like to hear from you, which objective topics are most important to you? So again, I'm going to post a Zoom poll question on your screen in just a moment. So we'd like you to choose just up to two answers. You know, maybe just one if you have a priority, maybe two as you like. If you choose other, again, we'd like you to tell us about this choice in the Q&A or over audio. So, okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll. And here we are. So again, I'll briefly read these. Which objective topics are most important to you? Please choose up to two. First is meet housing goals set by state mandates and regional priorities. Ensure affordable housing is built in a sustainable way. Locate housing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions secure more funding sources and partnerships. Uh, the fifth is locate housing near transit, jobs, schools, and other amenities where people can thrive. And sixth, again, is the other option. If you have other objectives that you don't see here in the either the longer list of eight or our slightly shorter list of five, please, Choose that here and tell us more in the, not in the chat, but in the Q&A uh, box. We would appreciate that. So, okay, good. I see the answers coming in. Most of you have responded. I'll give you a 10 second warning here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll.
And let me show you the results. So I see at least some support for every objective topic as we summarize them. So it seems that locating near transit jobs, schools, and other amenities where people can thrive is important to many of you, as well as meeting the housing goals set by state mandates and our regional priorities. But again, seeing interest and support for ensuring affordable housing is built in a sustainable way, locating to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and securing more funding sources and partnerships. And again, would love to hear more from those of you who chose any of your choices, but particularly those of you who indicated other. Um, so we'll look to the Q&A coming in. I see some are coming in, but I'd also, I would also see a hand raised. I see Brooke Miller. Uh, Brooke Miller, you should be able to unmute yourself now and uh, tell us your thoughts. Yes, and good evening. Thank you so much, Andy, and to all of county staff who's here tonight for putting this together. Um, I think I just wanted to comment on um, these topics and kind of the issue of these being interrelated. Um, I chose the first, the most popular objective um, as the primary objective, because I think that one speaks really to the, the most urgent need um and you know also our legal mandates within the county to comply with those with those targets but i also think it's important to recall that a lot of this development um is within the county's control in terms of uh where it is located and prioritizing areas that can support future transit um, and also that new development is a lot more uh, energy efficient ghg efficient and can support EVs much easier than existing development. So really by building out communities um, in those areas, and I'm not necessarily talking about only VMT efficient areas, which, which really only relates to existing VMT, but I'm talking about communities that can support um, density, that can support interconnections, and that can actually make communities stronger so that you can accomplish a lot more of these goals, particularly that goal five, locating housing near services and amenities. Um, and then also, you know, when you provide opportunities, especially streamlined opportunities to develop housing um, at market rates, you can also um, make, you can also allow for those projects to include affordable housing um, because you, you simply cannot accomplish your arena targets or provide enough affordable housing with 100% affordable projects. Only you need those market rate projects to support that in almost, almost all cases. Uh, not to say there's anything bad about 100% affordable, it's just a limited pool. So I think to sum up, um, these are these are all interrelated policies. I think we need to be driven by the goals and targets that are established at the state and regional levels, um, and that those are the ways by providing uh, streamlined ways to accomplish that housing, to engage private developers and private partners. Those are the ways that we are going to provide more affordable housing. We're going to provide less impactful, more sustainable housing, um, and really build up communities. Um, to provide for a, a better quality of life in the unincorporated county. Okay, very good. Thank you, Brooke. Appreciate the um, detailed comments. Um, very good. And then um, again, welcome anyone else who'd like to speak over audio. Please raise your Zoom hand as it is. I do want to, uh, our team are reviewing the comments and questions in the Q&A. And I actually would like to ask um, Teresa Beauchamp if you can hear over audio. Uh, we see your detailed question, and thank you for that, about um, your, the Prop A exclusionary zoning in Encinitas. And we appreciate the detailed question, but we do, we'd appreciate, do you mind coming over the audio? If you don't mind maybe raising your Zoom hand if you can, or tell us in the chat. We, we'd like to hear a little bit more from you about uh, what you mean by, and I see your hand come up, I think. I think I saw it. Hang on there, Teresa. You, sh you should be able to... <laughs> that, go you ahead, I think I, yes, I can. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, so we have uh, Prop A has been in the city of Encinitas since uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And so it requires that um, if any development uh, is going to exceed two stories, it requires the vote of the residents to pass. And, you know, as we have already, we've met our um, no net, we're about to meet our no net loss threshold uh, from our housing element sites. All were private developer 
uh, how should I say, private developers are those that are developing all of those 15 sites so far. And we have not been able to meet our RENA requirements because of the uh, small percentage of affordable housing that the private sector has been able to offer. So to make up for that, you know, the no net loss threshold that we've met, we really have to do 100% affordable at this time to meet the goal. And to do that, affordable developers say that they won't develop anything pretty much for less than 60 units in general to make it economically feasible. And anything in the land that is available here for that purpose, you know, would have to exceed two stories. And that would require a vote of the people. And in all the research I've done, and I'd love someone to tell me it's happened, but anytime something goes up for a vote of to upzone in a single family home residential area, it fails. And so I, and in order to do the affordable housing 100% um, communities, you know, we need a lot of partnerships and funding to make that happen from county, state, and other institutions. So anyway, I'm, that's just Encinitas dilemma. And it's, you know, the expensive cost of land on the coast is a big part of that. So I'm, I'm just curious if the county, um, you know, would consider granting, uh, well, giving grants in a city that's got exclusionary zoning like this. Teresa. Because we need county money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Teresa, thank you very much for coming on and explaining. That was helpful, I think. I see Kelly Salmon's nodding her head and she's coming off of mute. And Kelly, do, do you have some initial response and thoughts to uh, what Teresa's brought up? Yeah, no, absolutely. And thank you for that question, Teresa. So what I can <laughs> let you know is that the, in, in our department, we'll provide funding for developments you know, regardless of local restrictions. What is required is that developers are able to show that, they, that they've been able to, you know, um, obtain their permits or that they're in the process of that. So really, it, you know, it would fall back to the planning and development services there in Encinitas. Our requirement is just simply that those entitlements are either in place or in the process with the local government. I mean, and we're, we, we would love to fund developments everywhere. And Encinitas, <laughs> County Cedro, Fallbrook, Ramona, you know, wherever it is that we can get that housing. Good. All right, Teresa, hopefully that answers your, your question. Thank you for, uh, you know, these, these can be complex, challenging, conditions even in in a in another jurisdiction but we appreciate you checking in and asking and really hopefully this is this is helpful so. thank you good well very good i appreciate that i want to i do see a couple other zoom hands raised i am definitely going to be coming to you i see carla hill and madison coleman and in the moment but i'd like to quickly check back with our q a uh, section to recognize some comments and questions that have come in there um Jesse Hanwitt noted in a comment that the knowing that the senior population is increasing, supporting aging in place should be an objective with the use of universal design. Jesse Hanwitt, thank you very much for that. This is this is the type of feedback we're looking for to help further understand ideas for um, potentially refining the objectives. Uh, I see Melanie provided a comment also about make it easier to transfer ownership of single family homes owned by the silver tsunami. I think you're referring to older adults um, and redevelopment of those homes to multi-unit in partnership with relocating these seniors in a desirable, affordable location. So Melanie, thank you uh, for those creative ideas. And Brooke Miller, again, thank you again. Um, investigate streamlining options to facilitate production of housing to accomplish these objectives, particularly ministerial approvals. And uh, thank you for thanking the staff. Um, and absolutely, Brooke, thank you for bringing that up. Um, many, virtually many, and not virtually all the staff who were here actually tonight are part of those streamlining efforts as well. Those are ongoing efforts at the County of San Diego. So thank you for continuing to elevate um, that. And um, Teresa, thank you for the, <laughs> for the thank you. And then Karen Gless, uh, we see your comment. Or uh, I think it looks like a question. Uh, is there an awareness of the continuity of open space so critters can move through our county safely? 
also sustainability means to you and awareness of the level of biodiversity that is special to San Diego County as any building takes place. So thank you for, for caring for that. I'll, I'll ask the, uh, the, probably the planning staff to offer any feedback or response to um, the comment around um, how this relate, how housing choices relate to our open spaces and biodiversity. So thank you for that. Um, and then uh, also, Alicia, I see your um, new question here. Who does one contact at the county regarding property for low income housing development opportunities for the unincorporated areas? And I, we will, I, I think we will absolutely have a response to you shortly here in the Q and A. Um, look forward to that coming up soon here in the in the Q and A box. And I, again, I want to come to the. Uh, um, to our raised hand uh, commenters and just, just double checking here. Um, I wanted to recognize a couple of the responses to some earlier questions that came in. Um, again, Madison Coleman asked about prior to prioritizing all new construction for electrofit, electric and retrofitting existing homes. Um, and thanks to Tara for clarifying that these, these five Ps, these goals as currently defined do not provide that level of specificity for new construction, uh, but are more overarching and strategy goals. Um, and Le Levi Gaffigloni, I apologize, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but uh, you're confused about the RENA or the Regional Housing Needs Assessment, for those of you not familiar with that term. How do we go from needing 109,000 units by 2029 um, in 14,000 per year until then and is that a correct metric? So um, Tara, clarify with a response there for everyone's benefit that the, the Regional Housing Needs Assessment or RENA as the acronym is known sometimes, for the entire San Diego region is 171,689 across the 19 jurisdictions. So 18 cities in one county, um, including the unincorporated county. Um, of the county share of that 171 plus thousand um, from 2021 to 2029 is 6,700 units. And Tara's provided a link to anyone who's interested in learning more about the RENA and these housing allocations in the Q&A. So thank you, um, Tara, for following up on those questions. So um, excellent. So I'd like to, let's see here. Um, Let's see, uh, Carla Hill, and then we'll go to Madison uh, Coleman. So Carla Hill, you should be able to unmute yourself now and uh, um, go ahead and let us know what, what your thoughts or question, uh, comments you wanted to offer us. I was just wondering what is considered affordable. Hmm. Do you go by, you know, is it down to tiny homes and ADU size units like homeless people could be grant gifted funds and that's affordable or is it, per area, you have a different assessment. You know, obviously in Encinitas or Loya, it's gonna be more expensive housing. They're not gonna want as low of an income affordability home built nearby. Right. So I just was wondering, did you already, do you have different like qualifications in different areas that Absolutely. maybe they? Absolutely, yes. Thank you for the question, Carla. And um, there are, I see Kelly Salmon's coming off mute to help answer this. And um, there are um, very official kind of technical definitions of affordable housing when it comes to housing policy in our state. And then of course at our local level too. But I'll, Kelly, thank you for coming online to help answer that question more better than I can, so. In, in general, housing is considered to be affordable when a household is not paying any more than 30% of their income towards their housing related expenses. And so depending on funding source and depending on programs that are maybe subsidizing that housing, you know, we tend to see housing that's subsidized for households earning 80% of the area median income all the way down to 0%. So your homeless housing, you're usually, you're usually seeing that 0 to 30% of the AMI up to more of that, that working poor, as we may call them, at your 80% of the area median income. But in, in general, not spending more than 30% of your monthly income on housing is what's considered to be affordable. So then how did that work? Are you going to be doing other um, things for people that are very low income? 
and and areas where they can live instead of having homeless people in tents? Or is this more because I mean, I could make a million dollars and then it's affordable because I only have to pay 350,000 for my home? Absolutely. So, so currently funding sources that are available through the state or federal government and, and local funding sources are typically for those households from the zero to 30%, which is typically our homeless individuals, up to 80%, uh, prim primarily the 50 to 60% of the area median income is, is where we see most of those funding sources available. Uh, but as our homeless crisis continues to grow, there has been more of a focus state and, and count countrywide on that zero to 30% and those, those families that are more typically either homeless or at risk of, of becoming homeless in the very near future. Mm -hmm. And Kelly, if I could build in on Carla's question to and forgive me if you know this and I missed it, but with technical definitions that the state identifies for how they define affordable housing, you were mentioning the 30% to 80%, that number in a given community such as Carla's neighborhood would be different because of that area median income compared to another neighborhood which may have a lower area median income or a higher area median income. So that does fluctuate by location. Is that right, Kelly? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's usually a rather, rather large bucket. So for example, the entire San Diego area is identified as one area median income rather than certain, certain neighborhoods within San Diego. But yes, the area median income in San Diego does look different than it does in, say, San Francisco or even in LA. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Carla, does that answer your questions? Has... Um, yes. So okay. I just was, I guess, wondering then, would they be doing in all the different areas, they would make different affordable homes or like, have you already scoped out different land areas that are available? Yeah, absolutely. So we really strive to make sure, you know, as a county, as a state, to make sure that, that everyone has equal opportunities. Uh, so we, we look to have our, our lowest income households be for those children to go to school with those with higher income families and in higher opportunity areas and really housing choice for our, for our families. So we look to put housing for all area median incomes throughout our uh, throughout our you know county into those uh, you know hopefully most higher resource areas. Uh, so we would love to see you know zero to thirty percent income housing in our beach communities, as well as downtown, and you know as well as in some of our uh, you know uh, you know yeah. Spring Valley type and areas. Uh, I'm really ensuring that that we have equitable housing that our children, our seniors, our families are are all able to access. Uh, resources equitably regardless of what their income is and let's let's build them up out of poverty rather than concentrating any income level into one area yeah because so many are leaving mm -hmm. i was just i had one other question was based on that other lady's comment that a lot of developers don't want to take on a project unless it's like 60 units or more would there be smaller developers and builders that would because maybe those are other bigger builders and developers and maybe give other smaller ones opportunities. It's just my comment. Absolutely. I think we do see that and depending upon different locations, the market conditions in a different in different neighborhoods and communities. Um, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Is that right, Kelly? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think a lot of the, the efforts that our planning and development services team has really been striving for the last few years with our inclusionary housing, you know, really speaks to that and allowing affordable housing development you know, to be built within market rate, which you know, our developers, they're, they're in, you know, they're business people. And so really, at the end of the day, it does have to pencil out for them, they have to be able to, you know, pay their employees and, you know, and make a bottom line. And so our, a lot of efforts around ways to, to help streamline that. Right. Yeah. Carla, okay. thank you for your okay. questions you. and, and your comments too. We appreciate that. Um, so I, it's, it's always safe to say even for, for everybody's benefit, any one person's questions or comments, there's probably at least one or two other in our group who have a similar. So thank you to all of you, Carla and, and everyone who's brought forward a comment or question uh, here tonight. So uh, Madison Coleman, I see your, your hand raised. You should be able to unmute yourself and uh, talk over audio. Thank you, um, Madison Coleman, policy advocate with Climate Action Campaign. Uh, first, thank you to staff for putting this on and for answering my question in the Q&A. Um, we, we support Sandex 5Ps and the blueprint objectives thus far, uh, especially as it 
relates to prioritizing housing for all income categories in VMT efficient areas, also near transit and jobs and other daily essentials that folks need to get to. Um, it's the only way we're going to significantly slash GHG emissions from the transportation sector, which I'm sure you all know is the largest source of emissions in our region. Um, um, I see a lot of great specific housing comments in the Q&A. So my questions are just clarification questions. I know that you said that the objectives will be refined, but will they be developed further to have more specific language or will they stay broad? Um, and will the, the blueprint be developed into a policy or just more of a framework for what future county policies should prioritize? I'm just trying to understand the intent and the purpose of, um, of what the housing blueprint will ultimately become. Thanks. Thank you, Madison. I appreciate you. I appreciate your comments. You're reflecting on what has been developed thus far, but then your questions about kind of how the blueprint, I think I'll ask Natalia to come on in a moment, but absolutely I'll, I'll start off with a response for you that this is the housing blueprint as developed by the County of San Diego is certainly in the early stages. These, these uh, goals and objectives that we've reviewed tonight are certainly considered draft. And they also represent the starting point of a, you know, more steps to come in developing more detailed um, strategies and implementation steps. And I think, you know, some level of funding priorities as well down the line. So I'll offer that as initial response to you. But um, Natalia, if I could ask you, would you offer more? I'm sure you could do a better job of uh, further explaining a little bit more to Madison's question about kind of the path forward and the more on the intent of the blueprint. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with the housing blueprint, we have so much still to do in some of these initiatives that have already been identified for us and the different strategies and solutions that the county is still looking to explore moving forward. So this housing blueprint is an opportunity to really provide all departments across the organization the guidance needed to take action on those different um, initiatives and the different solutions and strategies that will be considered moving forward. Uh, as of right now, in next steps, you know, really securing a complete complete set of goals and objectives is the focus in this phase. And as we are able to do that in collaboration with the community and the board, we'd be able to then make sure that the strategies that we're working towards are going to align to those goals and objectives. And future phases of development of this blueprint will definitely have opportunities for expanded engagement. Um, I had mentioned in the presentation that we are looking to uh, currently contract with a consultant to help us finalize the blueprint and part of that work will include um, more exploration into other uh, strategy that strategies component of the blueprint that goes beyond the goals and objectives. Okay, very good. Thank you, Natalia. Madison, thank you for the questions and appreciate you being involved and for for all everyone here too, by the way, we encourage you to, uh, as a quick note about more involvement to come, please do share with your networks, your friends and neighbors, or if you represent organizations, advocacy group associations um, with a keen interest um, in informing the housing blueprint, please by all means share uh, the links uh, to this effort, the engage site. Uh, we'll make sure it's posted in a couple places in the Q and A already. And, We'll have it again. We'll be sharing it again on screen very shortly. So, by all means, please do help to spread the word, as they say, and encourage um, your colleagues, friends, and neighbors to respond to the surveys, for example, which we currently have live right now. So, um, so thank you all again for that. Thank you in advance to all of you who are doing that uh, to help out. I wanted to take another moment to come back to the Q and A uh, section again. We've had a some questions were posted a little while ago and we have some new responses. So I wanted to make sure we acknowledge those. And um, again, Karen Gless had a question about, um, again, the uh, potential impacts to open space with new housing development and how is that addressed um, from a sustainability perspective? Because um, biodiversity is important uh, to Karen. So um, Tara Lieberman, thank you for the reply that the Multiple Species Conservation Program or MSCP as sometimes known, um, helps to preserve San Diego's native habitats and wildlife for future generations. And it includes a large connected preserve areas that address a number of species. So there's a little bit more detail in the Q&A box there uh, for anyone interested. 
and there's also a link in that response to the MSCP for any of you who'd like to learn more about that. So Tara, thank you for that. Um, and then Alicia, again, your question about um, who who to reach out to about um, regarding property for low income housing in the unincorporated areas and Angela Jackson Yamas, thank you. Um, noting that in the response that the county periodically offers county owned land to qualified developers for development of affordable housing and Angela provided a link to a web page for anyone who's interested in learning more or tracking as well as her email address. Uh, so thank you, Angela, for that. So, um, and then I see an additional question from Casey Myers uh, about large developments can take years to obtain permitting approval. And if developments with 100% affordable housing are submitted, can they be accelerated as an incentive for developers? And uh, Tara, again, thank you for the response that the county has an existing board policy, A-68 is the official uh, name, that provides for an accelerated review process for all affordable housing development. And the draft inclusionary housing ordinance uh, project is currently underway. And Casey, I think that would probably be of particular interest to you. Thank you, Tara, for referencing that. There's a link to that process as well, so you can learn more. And please do be part of that process, um, Casey and everyone, to continue to provide your input about you know, what inclusionary housing will mean to you for the unincorporated communities in particular. That's, that's what that process focuses on. So again, thank you everyone for these great comments. And again, I wanna thank the staff for being as uh, responsive as possible with the information that they have right now um, to um, responding. So, um, and then I wanted to also, uh, another quick reminder, again, if you'd like to speak over the audio, I'd like to encourage you to, if you're thinking about doing it or you'd like to do it, please raise your Zoom hand now or sooner than later. We're doing well on our time tonight. We scheduled to go as late as 7.30, um, but I'd like to kind of encourage you again, if you'd like to speak over audio, let us know now. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to again acknowledge a couple other um, comments and questions uh, that have come in. So uh, Vivian, I uh, see a question from you about why do you think it's not obtainable to pursue a high percentage of low income affordable housing? Um, yes, yeah, that there are smaller developers happy to take on those projects if they get some support from state, county, and um, city partners, and uh, why wouldn't the government entities help, um, considering how much they spend on a uh, houseless population, and we have plenty of luxury housing. So, um, Vivian, thank you for the, the uh, comment and question. I know, um, I think it's I think it's fair to say, I don't want to speak on, fully on behalf of the county, but I think the staff would agree that um, the county government for sure, and I know all, virtually all of our city partners definitely want to continue to support affordable housing projects when and wherever possible and feasible, absolutely. So um, by all means, I think if county staff have any, I think that some additional response, they'll offer some additional response um, in the Q&A for you. Um, but, um, uh, and Francis, thank you for your comment. I think you're referring to, um, Tara's consideration about housing expansions that existing land being preserved. Um, and then Vanessa Cifuentes, it looks like a new question for us. It's very difficult to apply, um, at least you've never been able to find information on where you can apply for an affordable home in a program. Which office is in charge of providing information on the units in the inclusionary program that can be purchased for families and an affordable program or inclusionary program. So Vanessa, thank you for that question. I think we, we, our staff will work to respond to that question here in the coming minutes in the Q&A box, but we'll also I'll come back over audio as soon as that appears as well. And I'll make sure we share that back so everyone can hear it as well. So thank you for that, for that question. Um, very good. This has been really robust conversation. Thank you all for your input and working with our format um, overall. So um, again, if anyone has any comments they'd like to offer over audio, now is the time to let us know. Please raise your Zoom hand if you'd like to do that. Um, 
And let's see. Um, and I did want to acknowledge to, yes, we do have some additional answers coming in <laughs> to the questions posted in the Q&A. So again, I want to thank everybody for posting those questions. And again, thanks to the staff for their diligence and providing as much um, response as we can here tonight. So um, good. So let's see. Any additional uh, feedback? And again, I do want to also stress that those of you who, if you remember back on our polling question about the objectives topics uh, that we identified, as again, we still have on screen here on your right side of your screen. Again, any specific comments or detailed thoughts that you have about your priority objectives, we'd love to hear those in more detail. Um, and again, particularly for anyone who indicated other, that you have other objectives that you wanted to make sure um, uh, that that are acknowledged and included as part of our notes tonight. Uh, but I'll also again remind and take the opportunity to encourage everyone to participate in the surveys that we have available on the Engage website. And again, there are two versions. There's the short version, uh, and then there's a more expansive, longer version that reflects the more detailed presentation that we provided here tonight. So for those of you with more time and would like to work at a deeper level with this information, we encourage you to complete the longer expanded survey uh, at your as soon as you can in the coming days. So um, good. So I see another question coming in that we'll get to as soon as we can. And I, let me also say too, in addition to speaking over the audio with your Zoom hand raised, any additional questions in the Q&A, please include those as soon as possible, literally hopefully in the next few minutes. Um, again, with our remaining time, we'll, we want to do everything we can to give you a response tonight as much as, as quickly as we reasonably possibly can. Um, but I will also note that in the weeks, in the coming days and weeks ahead, all of this information, your questions and comments, um, the feedback we've received, we will of course package that and be able to be sharing that on the project webpage um, overall so that those of you attended tonight, those who could not join us tonight can benefit from watching a video of the presentation of this meeting, um, but also reading through the comments and questions that we received here. So, uh, so look forward to that in the coming uh, days and weeks ahead. So um, good. So I wanted to back on the Q&A again, please do if you have anything you wanted to submit or include or ask, please do that as soon as you can here in the next couple of minutes. Um, keeping an eye on the clock, want to respect everyone's time here tonight. Um, and let's see if we've got any um, new responses. And I wanted to, let's see, acknowledge that, again, to Vivian's question about, um, you know, why is there a concern that we, it's not attainable to, attainable to pursue high percentage of low income affordable housing, that question. Um, Tara provided a response about a density bonus program that's consistent with state law. And this helps to provide incentives, waivers of development standards, and additional density for developers of projects that provide a certain percentage of affordable housing on site. Um, so Vivian, I think, you know, Tara wanted, is offering one of the key ways that the county government, and I believe the other, many, if not all the other city governments, you know, in our jurisdiction, in our county, um, this is one way that they try to incentivize builders, private developers, to create affordable housing. So this is one example of one of those ways that the county government and other jurisdictions certainly attempt to do that. And the good news is, uh, if I may, <laughs> several line, that some developers do take advantage of those incentives, and we do generate some affordable housing units from that, just as one example. So, so you know, hopefully that's uh, helpful for you um, in this, our, our ongoing challenge of promoting and developing more affordable housing in our community. So Tara, thank you for that response. And um, E. Thompson from Encinitas uh, asked, asked a couple questions about what the county's doing, most importantly, to get people working versus needing free or low income housing. Um, and then when has it been the county's job to create or build their own housing? And um, Kelly Sammons for the counties responded, noting that the county is responsible for developing safe, healthy, and thriving communities and ensuring that all residents, including vulnerable populations, have access 
uh, to safe and affordable housing. And that is certainly done through many, many different methods and tools and approaches. So Kelly, thank you for that. Um, let's see, and I wanted to just check in here if we have any additional responses. And I, uh, Angela also provided another response to Alicia, your question about um, are the list of housing developers who work with the county public and where can those be found? Um, Kelly's response was that all experienced developers are welcomed and invited to respond to what's called the county's notices of funding availability. Um, and there is not an established list or a pre-qualified list. Um, and then uh, Angela, thank you for also coming on and noting that while it's not posted publicly, it is public information. Um, and Angela has provided her email address there for anyone who, um, for Alicia or others who'd like um, a current list of, a list of, I'm sorry, a list of current developers on county owned land so who exist today. So thank you, uh, Kelly and Angela for that. And Alicia for your question, we appreciate that. Um, and then uh, Vanessa, back to your question about you know, the difficulty of founding an opportunity, affordable housing opportunities um, as a resident. Um, and Kelly's response focuses on the county not currently having an inclusionary housing program for the county unincorporated communities. Um, the county does offer programs to assist with home ownership opportunities. Um, so these, uh, this information can be found on the Housing and Community Developments website. And, and that is uh, for those who need the audio support, it's sdhcd.org. So I think it's also fair to say that there's also the other individual cities in our county um, also provide varying levels of support as well. So um, re related to their land, you know, the, their communities as well. So, um, and then let's see, I see another uh, question from Tama Becker of Verano. Uh, will the county boldly require at least 20% inclusionary housing with no in lieu fees? And uh, Tara Lieberman uh, for the county's responded saying that the inclusionary housing program is currently under development now. Uh, there's a draft ordinance with different options for set aside requirements, as they're called, and alternative compliance, including offsite development and in lieu fees. And that is available now for public comment. As well, so um, Tama and, and anyone, please do take take this opportunity to, you know, learn more about that and provide your comments. We greatly appreciate it. Um, there is a there is a hyperlink in the Q and A box uh, where Tara provided that response to Tama's um, to Tama's question. So Tara, thank you for that. Tama, hopefully that helps to get you to some some new additional information about what's emerging. So um, good. Uh, very good. So we're doing well on time. It's just about 7.15. Uh, we'll be wrapping by 7.30. So I want to, um, looks like we've we've heard from everyone over audio. Thank you again, everyone, for, for chiming in. And I wanted to, again, in uh, respect to recognizing all the comments and questions coming in, I think we've, uh, I see a few thank yous. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but I, I think we've heard and we've acknowledged each comment coming in. Um, and it looks like, again, staff's been really quick on helping to try and answer questions. So thank you to staff for that. Um, good, at this time, I think we're making good time. I want to, um, I'd like to talk about a little bit more about next steps. Uh, in a moment, I'm gonna, uh, let's see here. I wanna share with you, give you a little bit of information more about next steps and Natalia will also come back with a few thoughts, but um, we wanted to acknowledge that this was a lot of information uh, tonight. Uh, that we shared with you. And we really appreciate all of you working with our format. Um, and uh, uh, But I do want to remind you that, again, all of this information, while we will post tonight's meeting later in the coming days or weeks on the website, you can access all this information now today uh, through the Engage website. And as you see at the bottom of the screen, there is the URL there, and that is engage.sandiegocounty.gov. And then you click on housing blueprint and that will take you to uh, the surveys and more information. Um, so please do, we strongly encourage you to visit that site, to participate in those surveys, encourage your family, friends and neighbors and colleagues to also uh, engage and participate in those surveys. Um, we greatly appreciate it. 
are there any, uh, I do, uh, I'm gonna make this very last call. If there are any last question, quick questions or comments we can take from you, any last quick Zoom, Zoom hands as they are. I think we probably got things pretty well covered. So thank you all very much. And again, you, as you know, there's more, more places and spaces for you to provide comments. It doesn't end tonight. So well, with that, I'll, I'll say my thank yous. Yeah, Natalia, please go ahead. We just have one uh, comment question oh, still okay. in the in the chat there that we want to make sure to address. Oh, good. OK, thank you. I apologize if I missed that. Did I, you can help me with that. What's it, is it on the open section? It's in the open, yeah. Anthony ah, and Alicia, yeah. Thank you, I mm -hmm. apologize. Thank you, Natalia. And Anthony and Alicia, thank you. Um, so as, and I know the responses are coming in now to our quick, quick moving staff. Um, for the benefit of those who might not be able to read them, Anthony Avalos asked the question, if the county's open to dramatically increasing funding to expand section eight, or similar funding uh, benefits in order to subsidize rent uh, for residents making below three times the median rent uh, for the county. And I think in a moment, Angela may come on quickly, but Angela, I'm sorry, Kelly, just before that, Kelly, um, Alicia looks like asked a quick question also about, sorry, Kelly, hang on one second, I'll understand this. <laughs> Uh, Alicia, about the 6,700 units in the unincorporated county by 2029, and yes, thank you, Tara, for confirming that. That's that is the county's RENA allocation for the unincorporated area. So thank you. Uh, good, Kelly. Thank you for wanting to come on. Or I think you wanted to uh, respond to um, Anthony's uh, question. Yeah, absolutely, so Anthony. I started typing in a response and, and thought it may be easier to go ahead and discuss this. Uh, so the, the Section 8 or Housing Choice Voucher is, is funded through, through HUD and uh, the lo local jurisdictions don't have the authority or the ability to subsidize that with local funds. Uh, there's some very strict parameters around that. Uh, so we really are bound by those resources that, that we receive from Housing and Urban Development or HUD. Uh, you know, our board has, however, in the last several years taken significant effort to find other ways to help spur those rental assistance programs. So we do currently have a locally funded rental assistance program that is specific for persons experiencing homelessness. It's been uh, very successful over the last couple of years. And in addition, our board took actions to increase our use of project-based vouchers, uh, which is a form of, of a Section 8 program. However, it ties that assistance to a unit, which in such a tough market like San Diego's uh, makes it a little bit easier uh, for people to receive that Section 8 assistance. In, in addition, we're looking at opportunities to use funding such as uh, ARPA funds that came out through the coronavirus uh, pandemic, specifically for those extremely low or 30% AMI uh, income households. Uh, so we, we really are exploring all opportunities to really focus on those most vulnerable populations uh, at that 30% of the area median income um, you know, to where we can. Section 8, unfortunately, isn't really a lever that we have control over. However, our board has been very active in, in really looking at creative ways to to use those levers that we do have some control over and, and we're looking at more opportunities in the in very near future. Great, Kelly, thank you. And I think, Kelly, I'm gonna put you on the spot. There's, as you were talking, one more question came in that I think is up your alley. Um, and the uh, it's Zoom user, we probably have a uh, an alias here, but that's certainly fine. Uh, is a real, this person's a realtor and would like to know more about how to provide affordable housing. This person works with landowners and they're just afraid to start and then have the county not approving because of sinking and other issues. Is there an entity that provides workshops for landowners? All right, sounds like education, right? Around who would like to build affordable housing. So, sorry, Kel, I'm putting you on the spot, but what are your initial thoughts about how, where uh, realtors such as this person could go to get more education and help their landowner clients learn more? Yeah. Absolutely, and it's a kind of a few pronged answer. And I think there's some some land use questions in there as well as some funding questions. And I'd be happy to yeah. type my you know my email address in there, and we can you know we can certainly work with our planning development services uh, team. They have you know a, a initial consultation consultation process that can help explain a lot of those land use issues. And on on the funding side, I know our team's always happy to discuss funding opportunities. We work very closely with 
Tara and, and her team in the land use uh, departments. Uh, so I'll be happy to type my uh, email in, email address in there and we can be sure you get connected with all the right parties to help answer those questions. Thank you, Kelly, appreciate that. And Tara, I know, yes, as Tara referenced the initial consultation process uh, with Kelly. So, uh, so Zoom user, hopefully that was, was helpful. Kelly's now typing in her email address now into the Q&A um, box as it is. And uh, so take a close look for that and uh, you'll be able to uh, follow with Kelly. So, so thanks to Kelly. And I wanted to also acknowledge all the county staff who are here tonight, uh, helping to answer questions, really appreciate all their work to prepare for tonight uh, and be ready and responsive. And uh, so I wanted to acknowledge them and thank them as well. So um, let's see. Um, let, let me try, excuse me, before I, yeah, before I move on. Entonces, antes de continuar. Uh, some of you, do, did you hear any questions or comments to the Spanish language channel? Um, or Alex, or, I'm sorry, Alejandra or um, uh, Andres, I apologize if you can hear me. Just wanted to check in and see if any commentary or questions that you're aware of. Sure, I've been monitoring the uh, questions and answers if there's qu uh, any questions in that box. Um, okay, right, okay. No, this is your Spanish interpreter, no comments in Spanish. <laughs> okay, if anybody hears me, uh, can you tell Andy to get on the English channel? Checking with us here in the next moment or two. If there's anything you want to make sure you share, if you've been aware of through the through the Spanish audio channel, um, good. And then I I do see another uh, quick looks like a comment that's come in uh, from Tim Flood. Thank you uh, for your comment. Um, looking forward to hear more as this develops and how the county can partner with higher education institutions on affordable student housing. There are state funds for construction but land acquisition is not included in the, excuse me, in the funding allocation. I believe these units would qualify for RENA requirements under the current government code definitions. And this would have a huge impact uh, our, for our students who are housing insecure. Uh, Tim Flood, thank you uh, for that comment. We appreciate that. Um, we're hearing uh, more and more that uh, districts, whether they be higher education or kindergarten through 12, uh, are exploring now more options for developing housing um, on their lands as well that might support uh, faculty, staff, perhaps families in their district. So thank you for that comment to include in the mix and how the county may move forward with the housing blueprint. Um, good. So I think with that, I'm going to check in here, Natalia. I think we've covered bases here tonight. Um, I think we've certainly, again, got our follow-up information here on screen. Again, want to encourage everyone to, again, visit the Engage page as it is, the website, uh, participating in the surveys, learning more about the effort, and again, sharing widely uh, with all of your uh, friends, family, and neighbors, and colleagues. So, um, Natalia, can I turn to you for maybe some, yeah. any last minute logistics or closing thoughts? Sure. Thank you so much, Andy. And thank you again for everyone who's participated tonight, asking uh, questions and providing comments on this blueprint. Uh, your participation is truly key in ensuring that the blueprint is going to reflect a complete set of goals and objectives to help guide the county's response to the housing affordability crisis. As mentioned earlier, and just how Andy mentioned a couple of seconds ago, this meeting is not the only nor the last opportunity to engage on the housing blueprint. So. Um, please do visit the Engage, uh, Engage San Diego County site and click on Housing Blueprint. That survey that was mentioned, it is closing on April 9th. So there are just a couple of days left uh, to respond uh, to that one. But you are able to also ask questions on that site and provide comments in other ways just by reaching out to us through that site or um, to the email address that's on the next page. As the blueprint is refined and we go into other um, steps within phase two and phase three, we are going to identify those additional engagement opportunities and those are gonna be identified and shared with you all. So with that, I just wanna go ahead and thank you again um, for participating in this. We hope that you uh, stick with us through this whole process as we uh, develop this housing blueprint and uh, have a great evening. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you again, everyone. And I'll say good night too. And we'll turn off the Zoom in about a minute or so. So, uh, so thanks again. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, future meetings with you. Take care. Have a great night.